Hi, replay viewers. It's Michelle Cooper. Welcome to my studio. I just did a really quick five minute scope about an hour ago from the garden outside. Hi, Nora. Hi, Judy. Hi, Randy. Hello, everybody. Some of you I know. I know your names and sometimes I don't, so remind me if I don't. Carla, Laura, hi everyone. Um, I just recently did a, uh, like about an hour ago, I did a real quick five minute, yes, Judy, I did a real quick five minute um, scope on my deck and showed you some beautiful weather that sometimes we have here in the Pacific Northwest. Hi, hi in Colorado in the UK, how's your weather today? I am having a wonderful sunny day. It's very hard to be in the studio, but it's good because I was trying to do a little sketch out there and I nearly went snow blind <laughs> looking at my white paper in the bright sunshine. Snowing again? Where are you? What in the world? Somebody is snowing somewhere. It's Katie. Where are you, Katie? Snowing. Colorado. Oh, in Colorado. Wow. Oh. Well... I love to paint snow too, but we've been waiting a long time through all this rain in the Pacific Northwest here for some good weather, and now we've got it. So I wanted to show you real quick how your garden's going, and you think, well, these tulips or whatever flowers that you have, they're not going to last that long. And so uh, you might have a sketchbook like this one. This one is one of my very favorite sketchbooks. You'll recognize these things from my deck out there now. Uh, the primroses and uh, some potting supplies. This is uh, a Pentalic Aqua Journal. I tried to put the package back on there again. That's really nice. Oh, it'll be nice for you if there's no more snow. I, I think that London's good today too, Janice. And so um, anyway, um, this is the Aqua Journal from Pentalic. I really, really like it. I like to do um, panoramas and kind of on the bench in your garden or along the wall you might have something that would work out just like this for a sketch but if you don't have access to a store that you can buy the pentalic aqua journal you can actually make a kind of a journal or a kind of a sketchbook that's called a concertina or a um an accordion sketchbook. You can buy these too, but they're pretty expensive. I've seen some of these on Etsy. They're absolutely beautiful. Maybe some of you guys make them, and uh, it would really be nice. Does Moleskina still sell them? I don't know. This one actually was made, I don't know by whom, but it was made for the Urban Sketchers, and so I took it with me when we scouted out some possible sketching places in Seattle recently but I really like it because you can kind of do a whole day that's what I was thinking in your garden if you wanted to do a whole day of sketching then you could do that by making your own and the kind of paper that you use and that you like to use you can choose that then so I have some Stillman and Byrne beta paper I really like the Stillman and Byrne uh, sketchbooks too and I take them with me very often especially if I want to do any kind of line and wash work. It works really good with pens and it works really good with watercolor. And so to have something small that you can carry with you on a hike or that you can take with you in the garden, that would be just really, really nice to be able to do. So I'm going to show you a really quick way how to do this. You can actually do a sketch before you even, um, before you even put the covers on this. But you have, uh, and this is just going to be a little square one. I've just taken a strip of paper and then I've cut it and I've made a long accordion fold out of it so that it's pretty much evenly uh, spaced. But then on the end here, what I've done on the end here is that I've made a little envelope sort of tab and you'll see what that's for in just a minute. I also thought I would brag about my <laughs> my Starbucks coffee cards because they're so cute. They, they had this gardening one one time, and I, I kind of collect those. 
Anyway, okay, so the, now how do we make this? First, you have to cut out some paper. Once you've got the paper, then you cut two boards that will fit as the cover over your paper. And I, I just have leftover. I'm a fine artist, so I have framing and matting that I have to do with my, my um, artwork. So I make a board for each end that's going to be the cover. Then when it's fitting on there, let's see, where's that other one? Uh, here, it, here it is. See, then it fits like a cover on here, and you can fold it out and fold it in, and it'll be protected. Then the, you glue a page on one end and a page on the other end. So I'll show you actually how to do that. You can also sketch before you even glue this on. You don't have to even have, have covers if you don't want to. You can just fold your paper back and go out and sketch in it too. But I made these for some friends of mine when we went out sketching recently. So put this uh, accordion paper away and I found some cool kind of paper that I could use for the cover. So I'm going to put that on. And um, Tombow just had a whole big thing on their on their glue runners. And I apologize to Tombow because I just love them. They're just wonderful. But I, I like Martha too. <laughs> so uh, this is repositionable here. And Tombow has some very nice repositionable stuff. I'm going to cut the corner first so that when I fold it, over. It doesn't create too much of a thick spot there. So I already just folded it over the outside of my board cover. Okay, so we got those all done. Now I've got runner on here on this part. Now I have to do the runner on this part. This is the tricky part of it. Just get it. Oops, wrong way. Always the wrong way. I hate it when you do that. And just run it on here. You know, you can do this with wet glue or tacky glue or any other kind of glue too, I'm sure. But this just makes it so much easier and you can use it right away. So then you put your your board in here and fold it over. Put the other side, opposite side, and fold it in tight. And put the other part here, fold it in tight. I hope I'm not ignoring anybody's comments. Okay, put it on here and fold it in tight. There you go. All right, so now you've got the front cover, or that looks like it could be the back cover. I did another one just like that for the front cover here. So now we've got the two covers for our, our sketchbook. And then the paper is going to fold in and it's gonna fit in here. And you'll see how in just a second. And then it'll be, this is how the cover will look. All right, so let's let's see. If we open this up like this, then that means that the inside part of it here needs to be glued on this side of the paper. So take this paper and glue this on. Get the glue going here on all the edges of this paper. Four edges here. Just hope this stuff holds out that I don't run out of glue stuff. Now this is the tricky part. Getting this to fit on there just nice, nicely. So we put it toward the back edge so that the uh, back part of the binding won't crimp. You'll see in just a second. Okay, so it's it's closer to this edge over here, closer to this edge on the front. It covers up the board. There it is. Now it's permanently on there. So then when I put this other board on here, and I open them up, you see, I don't want these little edges to overlap on the back. So that's why it's close, close to the end on the other side. Okay, so now I make a little pocket on the other side here so that if I ever want to, I can actually extend, I can add more paper onto here and I can make it bigger and longer if I like to because there's no limit to how thick this can be since it doesn't have any, any um, spine on it. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, you take another piece of paper that matches the paper that you have, and you glue a little fold over on it, like this. Just fold it over like this, so that when I put it on here and I glue it on here, it will fit 
on, I'll glue it on three sides here, and the opening will be here for me to stick my little tab into. Okay, so let's do that then. You missed what glue I'm using. This is the uh, Martha Stewart um, repositional glue because I thought if I made a mistake here in front of you, I could <laughs> I could kind of work my way out of it. But um, I, the Tombow glue, I think uh, glue. What do you call them? Um, tape runner, glue runner. Yeah, Tombow would be very nice. I just saw a really wonderful scope that they did. But I like Martha too. There we go. We get these all, th just three sides. The folded over side here does not get glued. Okay, and we're going to put this in here like this so that it fits over the edge of everything and leaves the folded part, a little tab right here, so that I can put my tab in here. Oh, I'm sorry about bumping that. See, I can put my tab in here like this, and then it's all sealed up and ready to go. See, just keep, just fold them all up. Oops, gotta, let's see, how did I do that? Yeah, stick this in here. Oops. So, I got I to gotta cut that one off, don't I? Yes, I do. Okay. Anyway, so that's, that's how that can work. Mm, let's see, where's my other one here? Yes, we can, we can extend it more and make them, make them fit in here. So that's how it goes. And then when you, have, when you have them stuck in there like that, then you can take a little elastic. I just love recycling things. So these kind of elastics come on all kinds of products, you know. There's a little white elastic deal, so I save them. And then I put a little bead on it. And then I can put it on my, my sketchbook here. And it can, be, it can hold still while while I'm carrying it around and it can look kind of like it's professional. I also like to use one of these little clips. You know, this kind of a clip or some smaller, smaller binder clip to do this with. So then when you're ready to, to draw or paint, then you can just open it up to whatever page you want. You can put the, I usually just put the clip on the, um, in between the spine like this and then do do my little sketch and I also to keep this from getting lost while I'm sketching I'll just run it like here like that there you go and you can make it any size you like there's lots of um, tutorials on how to do these on uh, YouTube as well so I hope that that just gives you some encouragement to do that then imagine you can just go out with your iced tea or whatever else you want out into your studio I mean out into your garden and you can draw and paint things. You can draw things like this into there. This can make bigger ones. You can go to somebody else's garden for that and do a little journal. You can draw the recipe for your mint, your spiked lemonade. So that's while you're sitting out in the garden. Draw the lemonade, draw your um, plants that you planted there. So there, there you go. So if you'd like to make one of your own, you can pick out some cool looking paper down at the craft store. Um, get yourself a, a nice little latte at Starbucks if you like. Go to the garden center, ask permission to sit in their garden and do your sketches. There. Okay, so uh, that was just a really quick impromptu uh, water, um, art scope for you. <laughs> And uh, if you want to get your supplies ready and then look at it again to get the instructions, you can. Thanks, guys, for stopping by. And thanks for coming to my garden earlier. We'll do more art scopes on Thursday. More really actual watercolor painting on Thursday. 4.30 p.m. See you guys then. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Janice. Thanks, Dave. And everybody else that's stuck into the bitter end here, <laughs> I hope that wasn't too confusing. But I hope you at least get an idea of how you might be able to do this. Talk to you later. Bye.
I'm going to put it like this. That's that last picture that never shows. There you go. Okay. Talk to you later, guys.